So I'm starting YouTube at my big age of 32. Hi, uh, I'm Linda. This is my first YouTube video. Um, I'm starting this pretty late. I think, given that you know most people that I follow on here are pretty young, um, but yeah, who am I? I am a crafter. I make things with my hands, and I love doing it. Um, like a lot of us, I started something on Etsy, kind of during the first lockdown because there was nothing else going on. Um, and so I've come on here because I think it'd be great to kind of show you guys how I make some of these things. Hopefully weekly, putting out some videos on how I've made them, giving you a bit more in-depth information, showing you kind of the tools and materials. I'm still very much learning but um i found that youtube's been amazing to kind of learn all these skills so this video is about how i created this it is a resin dish um and i kind of wanted it so that i could kind of put keys and like money and plate to put keys and money and stuff in it in the hallway no, it's not really a hallway it's just basically the entrance to the house but you know when you have like a side table and you kind of want to just throw things on it when you come in and so this video is essentially a tutorial on how to make it i mean i don't have like an outro yet or like a nice transition to the next thing because this is the first time i'm doing youtube so um mm, what what do you want me to say uh, uh let's think Yeah, let's go to tutorial. From tutorial Linda. So this is the vase that I wanted to recreate. It is something I bought from TK Maxx a while ago. Apologies for the inside. I did put some candles, I, put, I mean some wax in there a while ago to make a candle. And I don't think I properly cleaned it out, but that's that's not what we're here for. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to make this dish from this mold, which I bought from, I think eBay. Um, silicone which is best when you're using resin I'm using these three dyes and this silver acrylic ink my choice of epoxy is dipoxy from Germany and that's kind of what I liked to use there are many different brands but that's my that's my fave now with epoxy resin um, it's a very kind of hard wearing durable uh, material normally it's a part A and part B mix and so you have to read the instructions but you have to make sure that you mix these two together in the right ratio. This one's a I believe 2.5 to 1 um, and so you have to mix them together to make sure that they you know create the right consistency and make sure that they I guess blend. Uh, you'll notice how it does this by the white streaks. You need to make sure that you get them all out and they're clear as you can see here. Um, but just read the instructions and you'll know exactly what to do. I use inks from Resin 8. They've got really good pigments and I find that they, they don't need too much work to kind of get them to... Uh, work with the resin so they're very very good pigments um, if you're looking for something particular Try and get this effect of the silver in the black, just don't mix too much with the particles. So you can see that I've just only just literally stirred it a couple of times. And this is the same method I'll, I'll use to make all three colours. The blue, the black and white.
and you do have lots of air bubbles and so you'll need the blowtorch or the heat gun to pop them. Um, a quick kind of blast over the top of it will get them all out but be careful not to burn it. So this is the next day. It, it takes resin about 24 hours to cure, well, my version anyway. And demolding is one of my favorite things to do. You'll see here I've got two posters. I overestimated how much resin I needed, and so we have two posters that I made to use the rest of what I had, because we don't like waste here. Really ready to unmold, um, very excited. It's like the best part of doing this, just to kind of see what your creations become. Ta-da! Isn't that nice? It's just come out so well. I really liked it. The the black and the blue just they blended so well, and the white just gave it that pop of light colour. So I'm really happy with it. The silver has had it kind of paint, did some great work to make give it kind of almost like a starry night. So I thought it came out really well. Yes, it doesn't look quite like the vase. But you know, I've been reading on these like interior plat platforms, interior kind of like Instagram accounts that you shouldn't have matchy matchy furniture anyway. So that's what I'm going to go with. At the bottom, you'll see I've got a bit of a rim. That's because of how much I poured into the mold. This is easy to, to kind of work on. You just need to sand it down and it will be fine. Now here is where I will show you how to add some corkage to the back of the resin. Now I do this because I like to have a surface at the bottom of it um, that protects it from the surface. So because resin is quite, it can be quite sharp and even though I sand it I just don't like that sound of you know, resin scraping against any surfaces. So I bought this really nice corkage from uh, Amazon, I'll put it in the description box, but essentially it's just corkage that comes with a sticky back plastic side. Essentially it just lets you stick it down without having to use any glue. So as I mentioned before there's a little rim on this plate. The best thing to do is to kind of get some sanding paper or a sanding block that I've got um, and just sand it down, just get it so that it doesn't no longer feel sharp. Once that's sanded down, you want to go ahead and cut an outline on your cork. I did this basically by using the sanded down rim, pressing it down into the back of this cork um, and getting an outline from that. I tried using a pen, but it was, it, was, it was going wrong. So I just thought, can you just get an outline by just using the actual shape of the dish?
and then you just peel back the sticky part <laughs> and get your cork on. And it gives you a lovely surface so that you know there's no more sharp edges to it and it lays down flat. It's all there is to it and I think it's brilliant because it gives it a lovely finish. And that is how I made the dish. So I realised I don't have like a cool outro because I didn't really plan this out. I just thought I could kind of get in front of this and just go because, you know, it is extremely nerve wracking doing this. So I didn't want to like write a whole script out because then I would never ever come on camera. So I think my outro is going to have to be um, short and sweet. So thanks for watching this one. Hope you liked it. I'm going to do more. Hopefully next week. And I guess I will see you on the next one. Thanks. Over to tutorial Linda. And then shall I look to the side? Um, over to tutorial Linda. That's really cheesy, I'm not doing that.